large organizations, whether they're technology companies or government bureaucracies or other kinds of companies, large organizations have a logic all their own. They are vast bureaucracies. Indeed. Yeah. And so the only way you can change the direction of a vast organization is to be systematic and systemic about it. What I mean is it is a systems effort that involves strategy, goal setting, how you structure the organization, what mm -hmm. processes you put in place to guide people's work and their behavior, how do you re measure and reward progress, uh, how do you celebrate that progress, what's the culture, what's the leadership behavior, all of those things together or what I would call the leadership system, but it requires a systemic, systematic approach carried out over many months and many years, not a flash in the pan and one big communications rally and we're all off mm -hmm. to the races. How do you plan for a cultural revolution? So a big merger requires a changing culture. Absolutely. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh -huh. So perhaps you can talk a little more around the cultural challenges. Well, cultural change doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen by accident or by serendipity. Right. In other words, you have to plan for it, just as you would plan for rolling out a new product. So what does that mean? That means you have to have a very clear sense of what you're trying to create. And you have to have a very clear action plan for how you're going to get from where you are to where you want to be. In the case of the compact merger, we went through a process called cultural due diligence. You know, you go through technical due diligence, you go through yep. financial due diligence, we went through cultural due diligence. And what that meant was we identified what were the key differences between these two cultures, what were the similarities that we could build upon. Turns out the values people wanted the company to represent were a source of commonality and mm -hmm. provided a foundation. And there were some key differences. And we said, you know, those differences are things we're not going to paper over. We're not going to pretend they don't exist. We're going to examine them. We're going to leverage them where we can. Right. And we're going to talk about them explicitly. So you have to do it in a planned way, a systematic way, a detailed way. And last, but probably uh, most importantly, Microsoft has been characterized, and we're proud of it, by a certain kind of a tenacity and persistence and long-term approach. We hope we get everything right up front. We hope we're first into every market. But even when we're not right up front or we're not first in the market, we just keep working and working and working and working and coming and coming. And, you know, the, the bone doesn't fall out of our mouth easily. We just keep on it. Uh, you know, whether it's the length of time that it took us to get windows to critical mass or, you know, if I go back and think about when we first got into the networking business, there were a lot of years when, quote, people would say, you're not ready for the enterprise. That discussion doesn't happen very much because we just kept after it, kept after it, kept after it. You know, search. We're going to just keep coming and coming and coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. Okay. We are irrepressible <laughs> on this. Well, I think uh, in today's world, and I would say also into our active involvement in uh, Davos and the World Economic Forum, I think this subject has become more and more a subject that has attracted the attention of politicians. Um, there are some, I would say, more sensible aspects to that. For example, if you really talk about large scale, there is no doubt that uh, biotechnology and green biotechnology uh, will certainly have a role to be playing. Now, we all know that this is something that for the European consumer uh, it's not the first priority, to, see the, to say the least. But I think very clearly, if you're talking to the Chinese government, if you're talking to the Indian government, if you're talking to the South African government, the, the utilization of new technologies is something that will be helping. I think we can assure the food supply if we are tackling the water issue for many, many years. The new factor that is coming in, which complicates life a little bit, is uh, this attractiveness uh, of, for politicians of the biofuel. Because now we are going to use, and we will need, enormous amount of food crops, which basically is going to be used for substituting of petrol. 
and uh, we, in uh, depending which crop you are using, but if I take the maize, which is the one that is being used, corn, which is being used in the United States, you need 4,650 liters of water to produce one liter of ethanol. And I think if you look at the water scarcity, I think, frankly speaking, that this is not a sustainable proposition. And when you add to that, that the air pollution of all, all biofuels is higher than the one of petrol, I think we will still have to go over our books to see whether this is really the long-term solution for, for, our, for us to, to, to find fuel for the future. So this aspect is distorting completely the water balance that we can es establish. And I think this new factor, we have to see how we, how we can manage that. Today, it's time to begin a third transition. We want to constantly be making the best computers for you and the rest of our users. And so it's time for a third transition, and yes, it's true. <laughs> we are going to begin the transition from the Power PC to Intel processors, and we are going to begin it for you now and for our customers next year. Now, why are we going to do this? <laughs> right? Didn't we just get through going from OS 9 to OS 10? Isn't the business great right now? Why do we want another transition? Because we want to be making the best computers for our customer looking forward. Now, I stood up here two years ago in front of you, and I promised you this. And we haven't been able to deliver that to you yet. I think a lot of you would like a G5 in your power book, and we haven't been able to deliver that to you yet. But these aren't even the most important reasons. The most important reasons are that as we look ahead, though we have great products right now, and we've got some great power PC products still yet to come, as we look ahead, we can envision some amazing products we want to build for you. And we don't know how to build them with the future power PC roadmap. And that's why we're going to do this. When we look at Intel, they've got great performance, yes. But they've got something else that's very important to us. Just as important as performance is power consumption. And the way we look at it is performance per watt. For one watt of power, how much performance do you get? And when we look at the future roadmaps projected out mid-2006 and beyond, what we see is the power PC gives us sort of 15 units of performance per watt. But the Intel roadmap in the future gives us 70. And so this tells us what we have to do. Our generation has um, inherited um, an, an incredibly beautiful world um, from our parents and, uh, and they uh, from their parents. And it's in, really in our hands whether our children and their children inherit the same world. And we must not be the generation responsible for irreversibly damaging the environment. Uh, we must hand it over to our children in as near pristine a condition as we were lent it from our parents. To achieve that, we just have to, I'm sorry, seeing a, um, a wonderful lady from Nigeria here, but we, we have to wean ourselves off our dependence on coal and fossil fuels. <laughs> our generation has the knowledge uh, it has the financial resources, and important, as, as importantly, it has the willpower to do so. And we're very pleased today to be making a commitment to invest 100% of all future proceeds to the Virgin Group from our transportation interests, both our train, train businesses and our airline businesses, uh, into tackling global warming uh, for a, a, an estimated... <laughs> Children 
um, experience our beautiful world and encourage others to also do what they can. And um, I'd just like to thank President Clinton for um, enabling me to make this commitment today. Thank you.